when comparing working versus non-working side, group function versus canine guidance, literature shows that anterior guidance results in less muscle activity. So if working and non-working interferences result in muscle firing, and we want to reduce the joint loading as well, we need to consider a posterior appliance, but also think about reducing the muscle activity. Activity of the elevator muscles decreases as we open the vertical dimension of occlusion. One of the goals of appliance therapy is to reduce the activity of the elevator muscles, which affect the signs and symptoms associated with muscles like headache and reduces the joint load. As we begin to open the vertical with an appliance, the elevator muscle activity decreases, but at some point it rises again. So the range of decreased activity is somewhere between 1 mm of opening and less than the patient's vertical dimension at rest. In Bruxers, we will frequently fabricate a flat, plain posterior appliance with posterior occlusion to support the joint when the mandible is moving. Posterior occlusion with added anterior guidance will reduce the elevator muscle activity. So if we need to reduce clenching as well, I suggest to add an anterior guidance to disocclude the posterior teeth in lateral and protrusive movements. Contraindications of this type of appliance will be anyone with a breathing disorder. I typically want to move the mandible forward if there is a breathing issue. TMD symptoms like ear ringing or ear pain. Typically, I want to bring the mandible forward if I suspect the condyle is too posteriorly positioned. When designing the appliance via digital workflow, raise the posterior platform to the opposing, then refine so that posterior teeth touch evenly, even when closing. If you want to create an anterior guidance, add an anterior ramp or develop canine guidance in lateral movements so that the posterior teeth disocclude when the patient moves side to side. The first and the most common way that dentists capture the bite is in the maximum intercuspation. Asking the patient to bite down and grabbing the bite with the intraoral scanner is a quick and a simple way but can often result in the appliance needing adjustments on insertion. Many patients when asked to bite down move their teeth around the bite ending up being inaccurate. Instead ask the patient to close fully on their posterior teeth and remind them to hold this position while scanning the bite to prevent them from moving their teeth around. Stay tuned for part 4. Don't forget to save it. Don't forget to share it. Take care.